Hi, I'm Dr. David Hill, and today we're going to be talking about what causes pink eye in babies. Now, pink eye is a very descriptive term. <laughs> the eyes are pink, right? But you want to know, I want to know what's making them pink. The first thing I'm looking for is discharge from the eyes. That an eye is pink simply suggests there's some sort of irritation or inflammation. But discharge is interesting to me. What's coming out of that eye? What's on the eyelashes, the eyelids? Now, in the first two to three weeks of life, it's very common to see blocked tear ducts. The tear ducts are tiny little tubes that help carry the tears from the inside of the eyelids down into the nose so they can drain. Otherwise, we'd have tears rolling down our faces all the time. Those ducts are so tiny when babies are born that they're often not open at all. When you have a blocked tear duct, you usually get some kind of mucousy or watery discharge, frequently from just one eye or the other. The best thing to do for that is a little bit of massage and a little bit of a warm washcloth. You can use the washcloth to get the goop off the eyes and also for the massage if you want to. Now, if the stuff that's coming out turns purulent, that's a word for full of pus and nasty and gross, then we're worried that perhaps there's been an infection there as well. That we're going to want to treat with some sort of antibiotic ointment or in some cases drops. In the first three weeks of life, if a baby has an eye infection, we have to worry about chlamydia and gonorrhea. Now, all babies who are born in hospitals are treated at birth for chlamydia and gonorrhea. You may think, I don't have chlamydia. I don't have gonorrhea. Certainly, my baby's not going to get it. The problem is many, many women who have chlamydia and gonorrhea don't know that they have chlamydia and gonorrhea. Many people assume they don't, but they actually do. So the only way to know for sure is to test. Now the eye drops that we use, or the eye ointment, fixes gonorrhea, which can be a vision-threatening infection if it's not caught and treated in time. But it's not that good at catching chlamydia. So what we'll do is a little culture or some other test to look for chlamydia. And if that's present, we have to give an oral antibiotic given by mouth instead of an antibiotic that you just drop in the eye. After three weeks of age, we're not so concerned anymore about chlamydia and gonorrhea infections of the eye. We're back to the usual things, viruses, bacteria, and also occasionally a corneal abrasion. So how do you know the difference between a viral infection and a bacterial infection? Really, it's kind of hard to tell. Usually at the time, we treat all these eye infections as though they're a bacterial eye infection. The uh, one thing that we do get concerned about is a corneal abrasion. That can cause scarring of the cornea and vision loss. Now, babies often have kind of big fingernails. They're not terribly coordinated. They can get up and scratch their eyes. The difference is a baby with a corneal abrasion will probably not want to open the affected eye. Obviously, it should just be one eye that's affected and not both, and light tends to make that pain worse. So if you see that your baby's keeping one eye closed or is avoiding light for some reason, that's an emergent sign that your baby needs an eye exam and probably a general exam as well to see what else is going on on because there can be some really serious problems with the eye in those cases. Talking about uh, pink eye in your baby, I am Dr. David Hill.